So we're playing Cold of Cthulhu, 7th edition. Yeah. Uh, we are running the, or I'm running one of the introduction introductory scenarios. So my camera keeps giving me issues and... <laughs> Is it doing that strange flicker again? It's not. It just... The gain will not stay. So I am just gonna keep... Hopefully... Drop it to... It's fine. Six. So we're... Uh, we're good. My hair looks a mess today. My hair is a mess. Yeah, but you had time this second to do your hair, but that's yeah. fine. Uh, hey, Ryan. Hey, I just show up. It's great. We're joined you by Ryan. Uh, we would be joined by other players, but... Uh, calling the Dark Lord seems to have scared them off. Yeah. Yeah. But that's fine. So they offered me cookies, so... They're, like, they're, sure. they're afraid of things that go bump in the night. Bump in the night. Or, yeah. So, you know, not foreshadowing at all here. Not foreshadowing at all. Oh. So I got I got a new set of little dice to yes. for tonight's game. Ooh. It, did that come in the starter kit? It or? did come in the starter kit, and I'm excited to use these ones. Are they special dice, or are they just a no, big set of dice? They're just a big set of dice. I was hoping like the zero would be like a, like a Cthulhu face or something like just something to mark it because that's always cool when they do stuff with dice. I like don't that. think you can good do Cthulhu's face on a dice. It's way too complex. You could do like a like a very basic symbol of like what looks like an octopus. But that's not Cthulhu's face, that's just an octopus. I yeah. know, but people would understand what you're going for. I mean, I was always Generally. disappointed when Magic the Gathering did, uh, when they did, uh, I think it was Eldritch Moon, yeah. was like, you did Emrakul as a, looks like a hairdo. Actually, it looks <laughs> like a weird mushroom. Yeah. Putting, it's like a mushroom well, with tentacles. It, it's Cthulhu. So, you know, you put him on the dice, every time you roll a Cthulhu, everyone around you goes insane. Now, hopefully these dice roll better than what uh, my dice last week did in... Uh... Better or worse? See, that's the thing. Like, after talking to you about this game for a little bit last night, I was like, so I want to roll worse than better because... So, there's a... Oh, yeah. We'll get to that when it comes up. Yeah. yeah. So, do you want to... So, let's start off with... Let's explain some of the mechanics of the game. Okay, so basic mechanics on the card sheet. Uh, you have, under everything, you have... Your camera's over there, not over there. I don't know, I put it that yeah, way. Your camera's here. Yeah. I put it uh, that way. Okay. <laughs> just, just, yeah, just... Uh, on the carrot sheet, you have, under every... Well, almost every number. So, strength, dex, int... It, there's so the three numbers. Yes. All right? But this is also under the skills. Yes. Yeah. You have three numbers. Um, these are percentiles. You okay. must roll... Uh, equal to or under that number. Mm -hmm. The to succeed to succeed. Okay. To get a normal success. And that's so. That's the primary number on the characteristic yeah, sheet. Like the so big number. The strength big number. eighty. Yeah. Uh, you got a strength eighty. I got two fifties. To roll. roll. So if you roll under the second number. So in your case, if your strength is eighty, your second number will be forty. Yeah, and then the number we need that is sixteen. Will be sixteen. Yeah. So. The second number is half, and if you roll that, you get a, ha a hard success. And the third number is one fifth of the total, of, or of the big number. Okay. Right, so 16 is one fifth of 80. If you roll under 16 on a test, you get an extreme success. So it's like. Just to someone who doesn't do much, is it sort of like getting a crit? You do really well. You and if you roll a one, you get a crit. Oh, okay, so if you get a one, you get a crit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But considering you're rolling percentiles, yeah, it's kind of hard. Less likely to get a one. No more um, than getting a hundred, which I imagine is a really bad failure. No, not particularly. So on this, uh, you have the following characteristics: strength, dex. Uh, so <laughs> strength, dexterity. Constitution, size. Size. So that's what. So I couldn't figure out what S I Z was. S I Z. It's your size. Yeah. It's it's okay. how um, tall you are, plus how heavy you are. It can come into it on certain things, like if you're trying to wrestle with someone or something like that, Ooh. or if you're hiding, I guess, in a. If spot you're hiding, maybe. or you know, you might have to make it. I don't know exactly what all the roles it's used for are. Um, I'm sure it'll tell us. Or, there's appearance, there's education. 
Is appearance just how attractive you are? Is that? Yep. Okay. There's a uh, solid fifty, guys. It's education. Incredible. There's intellect or intelligence, and then there's power. P O W is pow. Power. Oh, we've started. Yes. You should be here, but you know. <laughs> Send me that message so I know what to do with the thing. <laughs> so, POW, as it says on here, power is a combination of force of will, spirit, and mental stability. Wait, I got force of will in this? Counter target spell. Yo, I don't want to take the damage. I'm paying off. one sanity and countering Cthulhu. Right. Sounds good. I'm going to hard cast. Cthulhu is uncounterable. Well, he does not, shit. however, take an extra turn when cast. Can I bounce that to. Why would hand? you bounce that to anybody's hand? He yeah, does, but if he you just bounce it on the, the stack, world. like you venture it. He doesn't use the stack. the stack. No. doesn't use the stack, he just shows up. He just shows up, eats the world, you all die. Well, yeah. I don't think that's going to do that. Anyways, um, that's enough magic uh, <laughs> things. So, so we... under that, you have, on your character sheet, you have Sanity. Yep. This is a number between 1 and 99. It's currently circled at whatever it is. And then as you lose Sanity... It obviously tracks down. Um, Can I get a pen then? I guess we're a lot more things will make you lose sanity than gain sanity. And unfortunately, you have to, like, uh, when a sanity test is called for, it's a percentile roll under your current sanity. Ah. So as you lose sanity, it gets harder it gets. and you lose more sanity. So I just, I just realized something. I was wondering why I could pick up the. The Have plastic you... when I just moved it, I realized the other mic was right beside me. Oops! <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, I turned both on. I didn't need to." So yeah. <laughs> you're going to be extra loud today. Uh, yeah. You then have the points mm -hmm. uh, from one to twenty. You have what? Okay. So hit have points. Hit points. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, from one to twenty, um, unlike your sanity, your hit points and your luck are all based on your characteristics. Yeah. Uh, your hit points, if you. Um, Go to zero, mm -hmm. you're unconscious. Mm -hmm. If you go to zero and something that knocked you to zero was uh, five or more points of damage, you die, I assume. You're dying. Dying, oh. Dying, not dead, just dying. Um, so lots of little tiny cuts, bruises, scrapes, things like that won't kill you. You'll just be unconscious. Okay. But like getting smashed across a room will kill you or yeah. put you into a dying state. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, you then have luck. Luck is used for some rolls. It's much like sanity. It can be a, a luck test for something, and then I guess just like maybe finding something yeah. or like how maybe not getting split. Just I, I get yeah. where you could see with luck comes in. Yeah. There's magic points on here. Everyone has magic points, even though you have no idea how to use them. That's probably something important to know. Yeah. I wanted to be a wizard. Uh, you can't, to begin with. Because, um, Magic under your skills... Really bad thing. Hmm? Magic's probably a really bad thing. Under your skills, there's a skill called Cthulhu Mythos. I have a flat zero in both. Everyone has zero to start with in Cthulhu Mythos. Cthulhu Mythos. Cthulhu it's Mythos. under credit rating, which is also a zero. Yep. Where is that? Uh, skills. First column in your investigator skills. Under its climb, credit rating through the mythos. mythos. Oh. Okay. Me speak English good. So, as. You, you, you know nothing. Nine. You have no spells. You don't know anything about the mythos to begin with. It starts the character. And the only way to improve it is through in game things. You can't improve it with XP or anything like that. Okay. Um, however, you might have something about the occult. Uh, occult and Cthulhu Mythos are two completely separate things. Yeah, I think that that's pretty much guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, on the investigator skills, um, you have your skills, and they start as a flat mount, and then when you make character, you add points to them. Um, okay. And then you have damage at the bottom, weapons, etc. Which goes under your fighting, or your firearms, if you have firearms. Well, one guy I have is just completely unarmed, and the other one has a hockey stick. Yeah. Um, damage bonus build, dodge. 
And that's literally everything you need. On the second it, page is uh, some quick, quick reference rules, wounds and healing, um, things like that. Personal description, ideology, beliefs, etc. Um, and then that is how we start this. So, <coughs> as I try not to die again. Um, so, who are you playing? We've given them both two characters each, seeing as there's a distinct lack of players here, and having one character each might make certain skill rolls Harder. undoable. Alright, so uh, I am playing, so I, am, I have two characters. Uh, one is an engineer student and one is an archaeological professor. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Their names? Uh, the archaeological professor is cliche named Nevada Jones. Yeah, he's all very from, uh, he I'm assuming you in, didn't make these He up, resides right? in Arkham, and he's bir his birthplace is Winnipeg, Manitoba in Canada. Ooh, Canadian. And uh, he's 35 and male. I assume, like, that's, that's pretty... Uh, so on the other side of the sheet, it'll have some uh, backstory about the character. Oh, backstory, okay. So let, let's, let's do some like backstory. So uh, for Nevada Jones here, we have handsome, uh, but a little rough around the edges. Below average height, wears a suit. What the hell is with this? What? That is the fourth character in seven weeks that I have played a below average height <laughs> uh, player character. All right. That, that, is, that is the bane. Yeah. Still not uh, short so of below average height, wears a suit when necessary, but prefers more casual attire. Uh, his ideology and beliefs: a strong love for history and ancient color, ancient cultures, and wants to make a name for himself by finding lost relics. Significant people in his life is his father, Frank Jones, whose own discoveries made him famous, and uh, Nevada feels overshadowed by his father. He has a treasured possession, which is a St. Christopher medallion, which he believes is a good luck charm. His traits are reckless and tends to jump feast f feet first before thinking. This character was just designed funny, okay? Other than the fact that, you know... You're below average height and named Nevada Jones. Yeah, exactly. That is, that is my character in a nutshell. I'm um, pretty sure they named the dog Nevada. No, the dog's name was Indy. That dog? Huh? No, the dog's name was Indy. Oh, I know, but in yeah. the context, I'm pretty sure they named that dog Nevada. Okay. Your dog so, is called Nevada instead yeah. of Indiana. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes went sense. a different place. All right, so uh, uh, next one is Louis Russo. She is a rather interesting uh, character. She, too, also resides in Arkham and is from New York. I think it doesn't say New York, New York. But, yeah, uh, they all reside in Arkham. I think everyone's they all in Arkham. They all reside in yeah. Arkham? I think that's why they're all together, because they're all in the same town. And you're not together. No, no, but like in this, that's why they can all meet yes. up in that regard. Yeah. So, uh, that's personal description. So she has an athletic physique. She has a stylish bob of dark brown hair and flapper-style dresses. Uh, dress. Her mm -hmm. ideological belief is she's raised in a Catholic church. She has a healthy respect for the supernatural and can be quite superstitious. Significant people, her father, who she knows works for the gangster Dutch Schultz in New York. That's uh, that's some good shit right there. Mm, sure. I love me some gangster culture, like, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Meaningful locations, New York City, in, loving, in, her lo in the loving arms of her family, also training on athletics, track where she can focus her mind and her treasured possession is a switchblade that was given to her by her father. Ooh. Yep. She's hard-nosed, has a fiery temper, loves arguing, and never walks under a ladder. I feel like I should ask this girl out on a date. You've well, got interesting people. Huh? You've got interesting people. I do. It's 1925, so she's a bit old. Well, now, yeah, but like in 1925, if I was... So he wants to go back to 1925 and ask this person on that. Oh, hey. hell no. I wouldn't go back to 1925. <laughs> 1925 in the Cthulhu Mythos universe. 
I would mm. go like 1920 Chicago, but n- n- no Arkham. way I would go to New York. Yeah. yeah. All right. Or, right, so Arkham. No Arkham. And we're in Arkham, yeah. Oh. Which is in Massachusetts. Batman. Rather than. It's in Massachusetts. Batman. Yeah. Not that Batman. Arkham. This one's scarier. Batman. I, I think. I think having a Cape Crusader flying around this Arkham would end really poorly. Especially with what your character looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. sir, what can I do for you today? Alright, so who are you? So, the first of the two I've got is Wentworth Avebury. He is a 58-year-old male languages professor uh, who was born in New York and, again, also resides in Arkham. He wears a slightly worn suit, about average height, a trim mustache, uses a monocle rather than spectacles when reading text, so... Alfred, what you've just built is Alfred. I didn't build it. Incorrect. They were pre-built. Incorrect. Sure. Alfred was not a linguistics teacher. No, no he, he was, was a, a spy. He among was other a things. straight up spy. Yeah, Alfred <laughs> was a spy. Among other things. Uh, his ideology. This is Lara Croft's butler, obviously. The one that they locked in the freezer. Yeah. Okay. Ideology belief is he's he, a lifelong interest in myth and folklore. He's willing to believe in the reality of the supernatural, but just hasn't found any hard evidence of it. Uh, oh, that's sad. His significant person is his late wife, Jane. He thinks that she wanted to tell him something before she died. Uh, meaningful locations for him are a quiet woodland space where he can just listen to the birds and relax with a good book. His treasured possession is a small frame containing a photograph of his late wife. Man, this character is so sad. I feel for this character. And traits are he's inquisitive and takes a meticulous approach to investigation. So he's interesting. And the other half I've got is Kiko Kane. She is I'm a... I'm sorry, what was her name? Uh, the second character? Yeah. Kiko Kane. Okay, that's what I thought I heard. I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> the, yeah. She is a 21-year-old female science student who was born in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. So she's a hippie. Well, no, she's Japanese. So I don't think so. Probably. Yeah. Hippies haven't started yet. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Hippies were always... Yeah, okay. Maybe. Maybe. She's a slim physique, below average height, thick dark hair, glasses, and a broad smile. She, her belief is in science, and given time, she can believe she can explain everything. She doesn't believe in ghosts and wants to find a scientific explanation for such weird happenings. Her significant person is her older brother Hugo, who she loves dearly, and he works as a doctor in San Francisco. Her meaningful location is libraries, where she can get lost in a massive book about science. And her treasure possession is a silver pen knife given to her by her brother. She always carries it as a good luck token. She's adventurous, likes to be busy, and get her hands dirty. Take that as you will. Okay, so I've got one interesting character. And one really sad character. Okay, then. I actually quite like them both. They're interesting. So we shall begin... You have recently each been contacted by Rupert Merriweather, an aged man you have known for some time. Merriweather is unwell and seems not long for this world. He asked you to meet him at St. Mary's Teaching Hospital in Arkham at 1 o'clock on Thursday. You haven't seen the man for quite some time, so this urgent summons appears to be quite important. Perhaps he has something to tell you before he dies. On heading to the hospital on Thursday and entering his room, you see Rupert Merriweather engaged with two other visitors who appear to be his grieving wife and his sneering, weasel faced son. What a lovely description. It's the 1920s, I mean, like, what were they going to describe? He introduces you as you enter to his wife and son and then to one another. You don't know each other. Okay. Um, he then asks his wife and son to leave and asks one of you to make sure the door is shut. Uh, Louie will go check on the door. Or Lois. I guess her name is Lois. Actually, now they look at me. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Louie, it's Lois. Lois Lane. Yeah. No, Lois Russo. I'm going to change your name to Lois Lane. Straight up. That's you just introduce yourself as Lois Lane. I'm going to introduce really? myself as Lois Lane. In 1925. Yeah. 
I mean, Superman wasn't out until like a couple of years later, but <laughs> my Dad was doing as well. It's like maybe this is how the inspiration be. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love going off track. It's great. All right. So we introduce each other. So yep. Lois goes and locks the door. Yep. Uh, she shoves a chair, grabs a chair underneath to make sure no one comes in. She turns around and just crosses her arms and is like, so what can we do for you? Um, in my youth, I and some fellow students became involved in what we believe to be an innocent exploration of the occult. Led by a slightly older man named Marion Allen, the six of us purchased an old farmhouse a few miles west of Arkham, near the village of Ross's Corner. There we could conduct seances and other psychic research in privacy. Alas, our work had some unforeseen results. Our last experiment summoned an evil force into this world. Instead of attempting to expel the thing, we were afraid and abandoned the old house, confident that magic brought the evil into this world would also keep it confined in a vacant house, or send it back after a short time. However, I have since discovered that the spell that binds the entity of the house lasts only as long as the casters live. I am the last of the group, and I fear that upon my death the thing will go free and wreak havoc on the folks thereabouts. I am too old. Too ill, and too much of a coward to go back to that house and try to banish the entity myself. I'm guilty of many things, but my deepest sin was unleashing that horror that fateful night. I'm convinced that the entity will escape its confinement on my death. Take the box, he says, gesturing weakly towards an innocuous metal box on the nightstand beside the bed. All the aid I can offer you lies within. You must find the courage to send that thing back to where it came from. You must see that this is done. Do this for me, please. So Wentworth's going to take the box, because he, upon hearing a cult, he's very <coughs> interested in this, and happily takes the box. <coughs> Zuko, on the other hand, is a little confused and a little concerned and wondering this seems kind of like she doesn't believe this. She's also curious why they ask for this grouping. She wants to know, why As did you call for us? Um, you take the box. Yeah, Wentworth takes the box. He begins coughing. Uh oh. That was very in character coughing there just now. That was in character coughing? Yeah. That's what we're going to go with? All right. It really was. Oh, okay. Um, and he coughs forth a huge gout of blood. Oh. Which spatters across here. Hey. So I just wanted to update. We have to, uh, we just had to change the category from. D and D to tabletop RPGs. Oh, so okay. uh, I was actually just told that there was a category called tabletop RPGs. Oh, uh, after uh, a user had messaged us. Okay. So thank you, uh, user, for messaging us and letting us know about that. Um. Anyway. So please make a sanity roll. And this is made with using a percentile dice. A percentile dice. And yep. what else? That's it. Uh, and, you know, a D100, so... Alright, and Sanity is listed where? Just one percentile, that, like, standard. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's under you. It's so under the characteristics. These are both... The yeah, so just use the grey one. Like, both two grey ones. A oh, D10, yeah. A D10, D10. And you need to roll equal to or under your Sanity. So, we'll start with Wentworth... Where's our sanity? Right there? in the middle. It's yeah. under your characteristics. I failed. For so both characters. Okay, so, so that one failed. Rolling one worth succeeded at a 44. And, and the other one uh, succeeded. Whew. So if you fail, you lose one sanity. Okay. Both my characters succeeded. So poor, poor Lois goes down to 50 sanity. Or 49 sanity. Oh dear. And uh, what happens if you pass? Nothing. Nothing. Just nothing okay, bad nothing. happens to you, I assume. Yeah. I wouldn't put that. I wouldn't put that past that. I um, wouldn't put that past this game. So, Merriweather is having a coffin fit and a spasm. Well, none of my characters know medicine, so I think probably 
go get the doctor? As I look at you with the with the chair shoved under the door going, we should probably get the doctor. Unless you'd like him to die, which might be a problem. He's nothing to me, so I'm very indifferent. This is someone you've known. This is someone we know. This is someone you've known. Yeah. Someone, yeah. Someone, he's someone you've known. Someone you've known. Yeah. Yeah. You in the past. I'll, uh, you might be. Take the uh, chair off and. Uh, I'm gonna just get some tissues and clean my character. Like, I'm assuming there was blood spatter, so I'm gonna clean yeah. off that blood really quick. So, yeah, uh. I have to regular with this. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> the room quickly filled uh, yeah. with interns, nurses, and. I get dysentery. Merriweather's wife and son. Um, one of the nurses asks you to please leave if you're on the way. I so. walk out. What do you do now? You have a box. Walk out. So what's inside the box? Should we open it here or should we go somewhere and then open I it? I mean, if okay, if we open it here, there's already nurses and doctors around if it's something fucked up. So we might as well just open it here. Okay. Um, so what? inside the box, what's in the box? There is a letter. Seems recently written. Mm -hmm. A yellowed envelope. Okay. Um, seems to contain something and a key. A yellowed envelope and a key, or the what? The, the envelope seems to contain some kind of letter and a key. Oh. Or some kind of thing piece of paper and a key, and a small sarcophagus-shaped gold box of ancient design. You said sarcophagus, right? Yeah, sarcophagus. Yeah. Uh, what is the... And there's uh, a small journal bound in leather. Do I see any Egyptian hieroglyphs on this sarcophagus? Because I have that as a language. I'm wondering if I can see and read it. Uh, there are hieroglyphs on it. Can I roll to try and understand? Sure. In so, a hospital. Taken out in a hospital. Good point. Let's wait a little bit, but that's good. Sorry. And it was a gold box. What was the last thing again? I just want to write down really quick. It was a gold box. A in leather journal bound. Uh, yeah, a slim journal bound in leather. Leather bound journal. Just want to be sure I get all this stuff. Thank you. So I look at this, close back the box, and say, "What should we do here?" Hmm. 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 Head to a nearby coffee shop. I should did. Was any of the, I actually, before I close the very quickly, did anything have an address on them, like the letters or anything? Were they addressed anywhere at all, or was it just blank letters, essentially? Blank envelopes and all that. Blank envelopes. Okay. I could use a coffee. Interesting. Could you use a, how would we go to a nearby cafe or something? Cafe? Let's just go for a drink. There's a speakeasy around the corner. Yeah. Well, this is 1925, right? Yep. I believe prohibition is happening. Question for you, because cash and assets are blank. Do we have money? Nope. Yeah. What did I put here? Because they're both blank. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Just check. <laughs> when it comes time to pay the bill, uh, I have no money. Oops. As long as your credit rating is higher than 10. Yeah, prohibition was 13 years, so we are in the middle of prohibition. Okay. Yeah, as long as your credit rating is higher than 10. Nice. My credit rating is higher than 10 on both of these years. Yeah, you have money. Okay. If it's lower than 10, you're dirt poor. And if it's higher than like 60, you're rich. You're rich. I'm middle class. Yeah. I think we're all middle class, which is okay. Well, obviously, one is an engineering student, one's an archaeologist. I mean, I'm pretty sure those are, you know. One's yep. a teacher, one's a student. So you head degree. somewhere to get a drink. Follow along. Um, so, what are you looking at first? We go get a table, sit down, get yeah. drinks, open the box. Uh, I'm going to look at the sarcophagus. I'm going to, but I'm going to take that out and kind of not make it visible to everyone if I can. Or actually, Who I'm cares? just. Gonna, eh, I don't know. It's a gold box in a bar. So? In like the 30s so? or the 20s. 20s. So? All right, if you say so. So I just need to roll under my. So, skin. the box. Mm hmm. Um, you're looking at the box. The lid comes off it quite easily. Okay. Um, there are hieroglyphics on the outside of it. Yep. 
And the inside has some other strange carvings and markings. Do they, but they don't look like hieroglyphs. No. Okay. Uh, what do they look like? Uh, make me an occult roll. I will join you on that. Uh, Actually, I think everyone will just look at this box, so... Nope, I got a 55. I think my occult's a 5, so I have to roll really low. 75, no, neither of them passed that. So, Nevada passed. Oh. For occult. And... Yeah, as soon as you get one, it's fine. Because it's just information. Well, good thing Lois didn't roll, because her occult is shit. Well, yeah. I rolled anyway, so... So, um... The inner markings are... Uh, they resemble writings attributed by certain occultists to the Lost Pacific Continent of Mu. The Lost Pacific Continent of Mu? Yeah, M-U. Mu, yeah. Yeah. So, like, not cows. No. That's unfortunate. I feel like there should be more beef in this uh, patty. This was a, um, much like Atlantis. Okay. A land that disappeared. I'm still going to just read the outside really quickly if I can. No. I'm going to do that. Okay, you Thank can you roll either Vegas. history or archaeology. Well, neither. I can roll archaeology. Uh, oh, I thought. I, I, could I not read hieroglyphics as a language skill? Um, well, no, you would read hieratic. Well, the language is Egyptian hieroglyphs, that's why I was curious. Yes, but take it from the person who actually. No, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm well aware. The, well. The, the written language is hieratic, the uh, hieroglyphs are. Well, they do tell a story, they're more symbols uh, than they are. Da, 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 yeah, uh, you've got. So, um, but most people can read. If you can read one, you can usually read the other. other. So yeah, you, to read them, you can make. Um, yeah, you can make a test on either archaeology or language Egyptian hieroglyphs. However, it will take some time. You will have to consult many notes, books. Okay. So I can read Latin apparently on this one, and uh, Lois can read uh, Italian as well as English. Nice, useful. Yeah. So Kegel knows Japanese and English. Wentworth knows Latin, Greek, hieroglyphs, and English. Yeah, that's about right. That's a language professor. Yeah, which so, is interesting. That's the uh, the box. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, okay. as. The box itself. What are the symbols on the box? Like, is is there is there um, is there a representation of it? Like, the black actually, box or the gold box? The gold, the one that has the higher the glyphs on it. Okay. Uh, there are symbols on it. Yeah, and okay. you know they're Egyptian, but to actually translate and decipher them, it's going to take several times. Okay. There's still a letter, a yellowed envelope, a leather-bound journal. Uh, what would you like to open next? Uh, let's open the journal. Okay. Uh, the journal. This is just a plain looking journal. There's nothing unique about yeah. it. No card. Sell together and with cords. Um, it's handmade. The journal entries date from June 1867 to May 1881. May 1881? Yeah. Okay. So. What happened between June 22nd, 1880 to 1881? June 1876. Oh, 76. Okay, yeah. so what important events are that? This is like the United States, this is the United States, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, my American history is actually pretty horrendous, so I'm not even going to bother. So, Better uh, than mine. Pardon? Better than so, mine. So, if you wish to read the journal, Mm -hmm. I do wish to read the journal. In fact, Nevada uh, will grab the journal out of the box and okay. start flipping through it. The ink is faded. Okay. And you'll have to make a language English roll. I pass with flying colors. <laughs> What's your English rating? 80. Yeah. <laughs> there are numerous entries. Yep. But here are the ones that stand out. Okay. There's a lot of them. I, I, I would uh, assume so. Okay. So actually, I have them here on my screen. Okay. So just so uh, hand out uh, two part one. Hand out two part one. Okay. Yeah. 
So, can we dog ear the journal just for later reference? Is it uh, February twenty seventh? Okay. Yeah. Is that the correct one? Feb twenty seventh, right. all the way to the bottom. Um, that's fine. I got it. So, I guess I'm just going to read this out. So, Marion Allen has acquired an artifact purportedly Egyptian. It appears to be a small sarcophagus of gold. Oh. Inside is a large piece of amber which entraps a specimen of some unknown arthropod. There's nothing inside it. Hmm? There's nothing inside it. I don't know, but the box is the same. I'm saying, oh. That's Allen is very excited as the box corresponds to a description he found in an ordinary reference volume in the university's. Uh, University's Orne Library? Yes. Orne? Yeah, Orne Library. Alan says that in another book, The Vimas Mysterias uh, is an explanation of the powers of the box. The text says the small animal trapped in the amber is already the host at, to a bound djinn, a guide to the spirit world. Jins aren't guides to the spirit is it, world. How do they spell D J I N N? Yeah. Okay. How else do you spell it? Yeah. J I N. No. 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 But know. you're asking the word, saying the word gin, and I'm just checking to see if that's what you're saying. That that's there the spelling is, you're talking. There about. is no mention of what happened to the other three. We agreed, and a date has been set to conduct a ceremony intended to summon the gin, which Alan assures us will be friendly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alan, you're stupid. <laughs> we have chosen the night of Saturday, 18th March, the night before the new moon. March 19th, 1877. We begin the ceremony as Alan instructed. According to that described in De Virimus Mysterious, a fire is set in the fireplace and a pentagram is chalked on the floor, marked with appropriate symbols and illuminated by two black tapers placed near the center flanking a piece of amber with its entrapped spirit. The others sit in a circle while I, the designated watcher, in quotation marks, who guards for the male violent spirits, sit in the corner of the room. At least I get the comfort of a chair, while the others can look forward to sitting on the floor for hours. Alan throws a handful of powder in the fire, producing an evil smelling smoke and dampening the flames which now burn a sputtering green and brown. Those seated on the floor begin the Latin chant. Alan has transcribed from his book. After nearly two hours, I see a trail of smoke circling up from the piece of amber. Its surface seems to be bubbling and melting. Can this be? Have we finally achieved? I can see a form. March 20th. 1877. We have finished our with our plans and have sworn a pact never to speak of which happened last night. We have satisfactorily explained the death of poor Robert. In some manner, the madness of the Herald, the sheriff accepts the explanation of a carriage accident. We planned it well. Robert's neck was broken in a fall. We told him. Harold struck his head on a rock. When the horse, his horse's legs and the carriage rolled, would it be that it was only that? For the rest of us, we will be forever changed by what we experienced last night. I will write down the, t the true events so they are not completely lost. The thing formed in the center of the pentagram, shapeless and nearly invisible. Its terrible voice should have given us a clue, but we were so foolish. It spoke. Then Alan cast that damn powder on the gin. The dusty, the dust of Ibn Gaza, he calls it. And that's when we could all see it clearly. Words cannot adequately describe the faceless thing with a thousand maws. It roiled and bubbled, never fully, no, never fully revealing itself at any one time. So terrifying was its aspect that I was frozen in place, my pen falling from my nerveless fingers. Cecil and Alan seemed as lifeless as myself. Well, a short, sharp cry issued from Crawford's mouth. Robert, however, rose to his feet 
and before anyone could stop him, stepped forward as though to embrace the horrible guest. With arms or those appendages that seemed the most like arms, it took a hold of poor Robert and twisted his head around as though he was a doll. The lifeless corpse was then thrown back in Harold's lap, and that's when he began that damnable shrieking. The shrieking that hasn't stopped since, even after we handed him over to the sheriff's men. We still had a chance, apparently. Alan now believes that if we had kept our wits, we could have reversed the summoning and forced the creature back to where to wherever it came from. But Crawford panicked and mistakenly believing that it would dispel the creature, reached forward and destroyed part of the pentagram, breaking the seal and ending its effectiveness. Well, Crawford's an idiot. <laughs> Released from the binding spell, the thing, with a screech that could only have been unholy satisfaction, was ejected from the house, disappearing out the windows as a roaring, screaming wind of boiling colors. March 24th. So good? Oh. oh yeah, there's a lot. Dude. I just wanted to check. Alan intends to leave Arkham and travel to find a solution to the crisis. He said that he intends to seek out cult scholars, scholars in New Orleans. I pray he is successful, but my only hopes are not as high at this point. He insisted that I be custodian of the gold sarcophagus and not show it to anyone. What's even more odd is that he's instructed me not to visit or even live in Boston. I can only guess as to why. As he will not tell me his reasoning, apart from his, from his insistence, that it is for my own safety. Marion still thinks that thing could yet be destroyed, or at least dispelled. But none of us who remain have the stomach for such an undertaking. I hope he can find a way to safely banish it without another of us falling in its male violent grasp. March 26. Now we believe that the spell was cast to summon an Inextricably. Inextricably, yes, thank you. Uh, bound the thing to the house. Al went back this morning to retrieve some of its some of our belongings and the stores and store our own ritual accountants. Accoutrements. Accoutrements. Do you want me to take over? Nope. Okay. No, he's reading it. Okay. Uh, he says that he hadn't heard bumping around the attic over his head, cursing him all the while. He said that it also told him that it only has to wait us out. When we who were present are all dead, it will roam the earth freely, slaughtering and feasting. Thankfully, the warnings, warning signs carved by, by Alan during better times, times that seem so long ago now, apparently are effective and bar the thing entry except into the attic of the farmhouse. I might be able to sleep a few hours tonight knowing that it is bound to the attic and cannot harm anyone else. I'm hopeful for the first time since we stupidly released it from the amber. If it told him the truth, then we would have time to seek the answer. God be with you in your search, my friend. October 14th, 1877. I just discovered that Marion Allen is dead. I just discovered that Marion Allen and is dead and has been dead for some months now. He was murdered in New Orleans this past August. I suspect that he spoke to the wrong sort of people about the things he has seen and they killed him. The newspaper mentions the sarcophagus so they may have been after the gold. That is three of us gone now. I must do something. I've already begun ancient history classes at the university. So I believe I will try to research the problem at the farmhouse in that manner. Perhaps I will uncover an ancient secret how to rid the world of that beast I'm in my own way. Brutal murder at the docks. Spinning newspaper action. <laughs> New Orleans. The body of Mr. Marion Allen, late... 
of Arkham, Massachusetts was discovered early this morning near the Gulf and Panama docks. A victim of foul play, the man was identified by local witnesses who said that Mr. Allen had been seen in the locale the evening before. Although robbery was the apparent motive, police report that the victim had a gruesome marks carved into his forehead and his tongue had been cut out. Mr. Allen had reportedly gone to the police earlier this week claiming that he was being followed and that he feared for his life. He said his shadowy pursuers were after the Egyptian artifact which he no longer possessed. And then uh, the, the bottom of that page there's several names and dates written in. Yep. Robert Menken, March 1877. Harold Copley, August 1877. Marion Allen, August 1877. Crawford Harris, January 1910. Cecil Jones, March 1919. And then Rupert Merriweather. That's the end of the journal. So. That's gruesome. Is it? I mean, that's... Having your... T well, the fact so, for read in the journal, mm -hmm. you lose two points of sanity. Okay. I'm at 48 sanity. However, you also add one percentile to your Cthulhu Mythos skill. So my Cthulhu Mythos skill is in 10? That's one, one percentile. Oh, one. Like one. the number yeah. one. Yeah. Oh. Now it's at one. So if you roll a one, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Hmm? Where is the first oh, column? There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't. I can't roll under one. I can't roll over one. You can roll a one though. Oh, I can roll a one. It's to equal to or under. Yeah. Okay. And then please put a check next to a cult in the checkbox. A check. Okay. What does the check signify? It. Would signify important skills that were used for when leveling up, things like that. When okay. I sign an experience. Gotcha. Okay. So, that is the journal. Reading through all the entries and finding the relevant entries, etc., has taken you about four hours. There was a lot really? to read. Yes. Oh boy. Wow. So just just to uh, update the the chat here, um, so Mr. Giggles. Mr. Giggles. Mr. Giggles. Yes. Reminds me of a cat's name. It is. Mr. Bigglesworth. Yes, Mr. Biggles. Mr. Yes. Giggles. Hello, Mr. Giggles. Giggles. All right. So Jin G I N is the best spelling. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That is hands down the best. Uh, and J I N I is the second best spelling. Yes. So we got some Cthulhu Fight Club shit about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> well, rule number one: we don't talk about it. Yeah, rule number one: we don't talk about it because we go insane and obviously do it. Yeah. So so there really. is still the yellow envelope. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm actually gonna open Which the. Which contains. Oh, okay. Deed to a farmhouse. Farmhouse on Boone Road near Ross's Corner, which is a village to the west of Arkham. Okay. And a key. And then the letter is that letter. If you want to read that one, Ryan. I'll read that one. Dear friends, in the years after the nightmarish events of that night in my youth, I have seen many strange things. Only now do I begin to grasp the truth of reality and the scope of what is happening in the world. I have tried, in my small way, to combat the horrors and make amends for my part in bringing one to our plane of existence. What I have left to offer, what riches and wealth I have, I will put to good use in dealing with these abominations. It is the very least this old coward can do. I can never make myself go back to that little farmhouse and put those events to right.
rights. To rights. I too gravely feared that which my friends and I loosed upon this countryside. Nothing of consequence has yet taken place. But with my death, I fear the bonds that will, the bonds will be broken, and that horror free to come and go as it pleases. Lives not yet taken already weigh heavy on my conscience. The method of delivering the thing out of this world is still in that accursed house. The translations made by Marion from the book. De Vermis, De Vermis Mysterious. I was never strong enough to take on the task, but I ho have hope that you are. In ridding the world of this, perhaps you will save my soul from hell. For I fear that my deed, deeds have not been enough to release me from this heavy burden. I do not expect your forgiveness for what I ask, ask of you. Signed, Rupert Merriweather. It's nothing of consequence. No. So it's fine. <laughs> you have those things. Okay, so what else is in the box? We have so we have the sarcophagus that's empty. Mm -hmm. We have the journal that is full of chicanery. And we have a letter. Which was the deed and the key to that house. And then we just read the letter that that was just addressed to us. So those yeah. are the four things in the box. Okay, so then maybe we should go to the house. So what do we want to do? What time is it? <laughs> it's like four hours, so it's getting late. Pulled it around six, yeah. Okay. All right, so we, we should probably go get something, some dinner, well, and like you know figure out what we're figure doing, out what our plan of action is. Yeah. Um. So, where are we now? We're just at... We're, we're a speakeasy, I think. We're so. speakeasy. We just went to a speakeasy to yeah. get drinks and figure out what the heck we're doing. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Um, uh, you are in Arkham. Mm -hmm. You are um, pretty close to the historic Miskatonic University. As the hospital that you visited, Merriweather, was is adjacent to that. St. Mary's Hospital is adjacent to the Miskatonic University. What university did I go to? I think Nevada Jones is gonna kind of like clutch his uh, pendant of St. Christopher and just kind of like be like, "Don't let me down." <laughs> Well, they mentioned there were a couple books that we could look up. The one of them was the... I'm never going to get it right. It was like the D. Vermes Mysterious, which I think might still be in the house, but there was also a reference book in the library. Yeah, we can go. We can clearly go to the library and study. Remember, the most important part of investigating ancient cultures belongs in the library. That's just not from Indiana research, Jones. Research, research. Research is important. <laughs> Yeah, so let's go to the library and research, and then after that, I think we should go to the house uh, and rest there. Or not rest at the house with that thing. Why not? Whatever's in the attic. So it's in the attic. It's not gonna. It's it's not until going until he dies. We don't know if he dies overnight. We might be in trouble. Fine, I guess so. <laughs> but I still think we should go to the house and like investigate. Yeah, that's fine like, for sure. And, you know, you can visit the library and translate those glyphs. Yeah. You might as well do that in all one go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so... so we get food or just go straight to the library? Now, you, your character knows how to uh, read or knows language Egyptian, right? Yes. Uh, Wentworth knows does it Egyptian say, does hieroglyphs. It, does it say and hieroglyphs? It's specifically Egyptian hieroglyphs. It's Egyptian hieroglyphs. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. You also so, know Greek and Latin. Uh, the town of Arkham has a small public library. Mm -hmm. However, that just happened to have a bunch of occult books in it. However, yeah. it doesn't have anything you need. I didn't think you so. need to go to the Orn Library at the Miskatonic University. Yeah. Well, that's the well, that's the library actually. Its hours think. are from eight a.m. to nine p.m. Mondays to Fridays. And it's only six. It's a Thursday. It's six. six at Thursday. Yeah. And then. All right. So I'm. So, Lois, she is going to go get, uh, yeah, she's going to go gather, like, cause we're going to be in the library for a few hours and that. Nevada's going to try and talk to the 
head librarian to see how much how long we can stay, or because if this is right beside the until nine, until nine, yep. they're not they're not going to budge on that. Uh, if you were a student or member of the faculty, then yes, they could. Stay Am I either of those of my no. characters? Because I'm a science yeah, student and a language professor. Not at the Miskatonic University, you're not. Okay, All right, cool. Um. All right, so nine o'clock then. That's fine. Uh, then yeah, I'm gonna send Lois to go get supplies. I guess food. Really. Yeah. Yeah, food you get supplies, run. stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So and these two are gonna go. They're both research. Is really into books. Re research is brain. Uh, these is two brain love activity. These two. So what are is the first thing you are investigating? So I think we for? should. I think we should try and. So, depending on the type of sarcophagus that is being used, there's several different it's things. Small. It's small. It's so like so big, there's yeah. this is this probably has yeah, it might be prayer. It either has a prayer, a ritual, or ownership on it. How about you just make the roll and go with what it says instead of using a real world? <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna get play my fashion. All right, I'll make a roll. Wentworth's gonna do the same because he has the uh, iron hopes he can use. So they're going to do that. I'm going to also get Kiko to go look for... Actually, I can't use that, but I can use library use. Uh, if you, uh, so for Are we the hieroglyphs, you can use archaeology or language Egyptian hieroglyphs. Oh, cool. I'm going to use... Boom. 28. Just shy. 61. So I failed. So I got... I passed my thing, but I also passed my second box. The so you got a hard success. Yes. So it takes half the time. Nice. Which means it takes you two days. Rather than the four? Rather than four days. All right, oh, cool. God. To figure out what's on this. <laughs> I don't think Uber Eats were around in the 1920s, but I could definitely see an orphan running down the street with a turkey. <laughs> 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 I don't, I, I think Nevada Jones would pay for that just to watch that. <laughs> Be like, yo, come here. Watch the orphan run with the turkey. Here's a shilling, or whatever American money's called. <laughs> shilling? I don't know, 1920s? I don't know. It was like hardcore dollars? Like, I don't know. I don't know what the economy was like in the 1920s. <laughs> so. I know booze bought everything. Yeah. You. I'll let you read this, even though, though he translated it. Uh, this one, right? Yeah. Seeker of wisdom. Servant, bracket son, of Yuger, Yog, brackets. Said, man, these are weird words. All right, here, here. You might, yeah. You can you, read it too. It's on uh, page seven. It's a uh, page handout seven. edge four. Handout edge four page. Because these yeah. are some names that I'm not gonna get. This is the sideways handout one. Edge four, the sideways one. Yeah. It, it's the one on like the parchment. Oh wow. I told you, these names are kind of weird. No, I... I Remember, you can rotate the image on that. I can, can't I? I yeah. just need to do this. Rotate the the spirits of Boom. Yeah. Seeker of wisdom, servant of Ugar, Sethes, deliverer of the people of the water, bearer of spirits of Narhothep, child of Toth, seeker of wisdom. That's what the hieroglyphs translate to. All right. So basically, what this is, I recognize some of these things. Is this is this would be a prayer? A prayer. This would be a prayer, and it would be something. Uh, it would be a holy prayer for sure. Um, Toth was the god of wisdom. I think so. Toth. Th Toth. Toth. Yes. No. No, what was he? God of. There's lots of gods. Not Egyptian. Child of Toth. Child of Toth. True. Toth thinks something else. All right, there we go. Then I'd have to rotate it four times to get back to the <laughs> proper thing. Okay. Okay. As for the library. Uh yeah. If you are searching through the library for anything. Yeah, there was a. Okay. So depending on depending on where you were, Toth is uh, magic and writing. Ah, okay. So 
while we're in the library, there were two books that they made reference to. One of them was a generic reference book, which might take us a while to look for. I don't know how many references. It was probably Encyclopedia Britannica. Likely, but... And it was probably, like, volume, like, 70 or whatever, because, like, large encyclopedias, large reference encyclopedias yeah. in the 20s were massive. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, really big. So, who is looking through the library? Uh, yeah. What is your library skill? My library use is yeah. 20% out of 50. Obviously, two of, you, two of those characters have spent two days looking through uh, trying uh, so to translate stuff. Yeah, Nevada, Nevada's been translating, translating along with so the other uh, two. Uh, Wait, yeah, so uh, Lois and Kiko. Kiko. The other book that they mentioned was the D. Was it? Venus Mysteria? Venus Mysterious, yeah. Mysterious. They mentioned that it might still be in the house, but should we look up to see if there's anything in the library either related to or referencing that? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll do that and see. As I said, research, research, research. Yeah. Because we're dealing with something clearly out of, like... Kiko's not sure, but she's just going to go along with it, because she's already... So, looking through... You're after the Vermis Mysterious... Yeah. Um, the catalog shows that it is held by the university. This particular university? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the restricted section. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it is in the restricted collection. Of course it is, because it's probably some like occult demonology bullshit. <laughs> On asking the librarian, um, the volume is on a list compiled to the head by the head of the library, Dr. Henry Armitage. That sounds like such a made-up name. Hi, my name is Henry Armitage. Yeah, if you wish entry, you will need to ask his permission. I would like to use my feminine wiles on Lois and go get permission to enter. I'm going with you, but I don't know if I can do feminine wiles. Are you hot? I'm an average 50. Dr. <laughs> Armitage is That's in so his... Fun. Office on weekday morning. Is this a weekday morning at the moment? I'm assuming we haven't. This isn't two days after. This is during the two days yeah. they're searching. So All right, it's so a Friday on, morning. So Friday morning. Friday morning. I'm gonna. I'll go Lo with you. Lois is gonna go in there. And why? You don't need to come with me. I have nothing you can else. You're looking for the other thing. What's the other thing I can be looking for? That reference book. All right, then let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna go in and see the head librarian. I'm gonna knock on his door. Come in. Clearly, I, I made sure I was dressed to the knives. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm going to use my bard skills on it. <laughs> sure. It's an old man. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. So I'm going to sit on his desk and raise my leg up, so exposing, like, nice, smooth, leggy skin. And be like, so... We're looking for something. And we understand that it's in the restricted section of no. the library. No. No. But why? No one gets in there. Well, you get in there, right? Yes. Well, then, could you take little old me in? No. Is there anything that I can do to make this worth your while? Maybe. <laughs> oh, really? And what is that? And I, I just, like, you know, caress his chin. He's an old man, right? Leave it to your imagination. <laughs> I attempt to seduce him. How? I don't know. What are you doing? <laughs> how, how blatant is this going to be? Oh, this is going to be blatant. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I go, so I walk back over. Are you debasing yourself? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Several hours later, <laughs> the answer is still no. Wow. But he has a smile on his face. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to steal his keys to the restricted area. It doesn't have any. How the fuck do you open it then? He just walks in. I'm pretty sure they just let him in. Is there security in this restricted area? You've never seen it. <laughs> All the librarian said is it's in the restricted collection. You don't know where it is. You don't know where his keys are. 
Good news. That's okay. She faked it. He's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then... No, it's the 1920s. He didn't care if you faked it or not. That's fair. He's an old man in the 1920s. Me. Which means that he grew up late during the 1880s, so he was used to like paying nickels for whores and uh, yeah. bars yeah. and stuff like that. He didn't like have that. to pay any, well, any this time. Well, whatever. I'm not slut-shaming, Lois. I am going to shame that librarian, though. So, uh... When I was in his office, clearly not enjoying myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is around his office that would indicate any uh, type, any clue to where or maybe... Is, is there books in his office? Yeah. Loads of them. Is his office the restricted area? No. Is it off, is it off of his office? Is like a door in his office that leads somewhere. Like there are doors in his office, yes. There are doors in his office? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything heavy in the office? Like Plenty of things. Like a paperweight? Like, or... like a paperweight or something? Something to knock him out cold with? Probably. <laughs> oh, man. What do you mean, oh, man? I don't want to do this. Like, I, I okay, fine. I'm gonna find, try and find a paperweight, go up and talk to him, have you know, general conversation. Blah blah blah. You're so fantastic and great. I hope I didn't catch anything. <laughs> I hope you didn't catch anything. What? Well, he's an old man. Like, you never know. All right. So what he do I need to with a lot of students. Exactly. Right. And yeah. That's what I would do if I was a librarian. <laughs> And this is the call. This is now. This is Cthulhu Clue Edition. <laughs> so fighting brawl. Pardon? Brawl? Yeah, fighting brawl. Fighting brawl. It's the second column, the second row. Yep. Oh, oh well, actually, them. she's she's pretty decent at this. Boom! I got it just barely. So, you knock him out. Nice. Score one for me and Lois. I really hope you lock the door. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go lock the door now. I'm gonna make sure that he's not gonna move for a while. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna is so. Is there curtains in that in his uh, yeah. office? Do they have that little string thing yeah. that dangles in? All right, so I'm gonna pull those off so the curtains go okay. wide open. Tie this old man up. Yeah. All right, cool. Then I'm gonna search these offices and rooms. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna gag him too. So. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the door on the left or the door on the right? Oh shit. Is there a box in the middle because I'll choose the box? No, well that was the desk. Do you want the boat or the mystery envelope? Door on the left, door on the right. Take the door on the left. Door on the left goes into a private bathroom. Okay. I open the medicine cabinet. What medicine cabinet? I don't know. There could be a medicine no. cabinet. Door on the right. Yeah, I'll open the door on the right now. Goes into someone else's office. Oh. Is the office empty? Yes. Cool. So I'm going to go over and lock that door, jam a chair under it, and search this office. Okay. What's in here? Not a lot. Like such as? It's an office in a university. There's nothing so it's a lecturer's office. There's nothing in the desk. Oh, or there's nothing. There's nothing in the desk. Oh, let's check the desk in the library. What about the person? Is there anything on him? I don't know. I don't want to touch him. Yeah, but maybe his keys. Where do you get money off of him? <laughs> <laughs> At least it'll be worth your while. Right. <laughs> All right. So, so back to you. As you're wandering around the library, make a library use skill check. Library use check. Uh, 29. So I get it just a success. Uh, you find the reference book, the reference volume. Okay. Um, what's the, is it important that the book is or it doesn't really no. matter? Okay. You also find, while wandering around, there is a, um, a restricted section? <laughs> the, uh, yeah, a restricted collection, yep. uh, which is behind a padlocked door. A padlocked door. Yeah. 
Jesus Christ, a hammer could break this open. <laughs> Oh, there's, there's two guards standing outside it. Hey, guys. No, just two guards. Like kids? No, guards. Like adults. Adults, yes. But they're not like super buff just like standing there, but I mean like security guards, right? Yeah. Just kind of sat on a chair talking to each other, Should you know. go get Nevada and... Are they armed? Have... Yes, and none of you are. How well are they armed? Incorrect. I am armed. Both my characters are in fact armed. With? Uh, one has a switchblade, the other one has a 38 caliber handgun. Mm. I have a hockey stick. <laughs> that would be murder, though. You know what? I think murder is kind of a gray line when it comes to dealing with, like, you know, archaeological finds and treasures. Being famous, that's what you want to be. Mm. Also the end of the world. But no. However, the, uh, the reference volume mm -hmm. contains several drawings, a short description of a small box. Um, now in your possession, small sarcophagus. Yep. It um, notes that little is known about the box. The scholars believe it being the position of a little known Nofru Ka, a would-be usurper of the Egyptian throne who lived in the third dynasty of ancient Egypt. Sorry, say that again. <laughs> what? <laughs> a uh, a would-be usurper, a little-known usurper, or would-be usurper, of the Egyptian throne in the Third, third Dynasty of in ancient Egypt. Third Dynasty. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I know exactly who that is. And assuming this is, has <laughs> actually anything to do with... Uh, <laughs> the box was believed to have been given to Nofru Ka by the gods. Nefru Ka. Yeah. And said to contain jinn that could be called upon to enact some form of service. Hmm. The book states the golden box was owned by the Parkinby Andersons, a British noble family. However, it was stolen in 1871 and has not been seen since. Hmm. There's nothing else of relevance in that book. No. Um, I'm actually going to go... The only thing I'm curious about is looking up... Is there any way I can look up information on the, the the usurper? Is there any information anywhere in this book or anywhere I can see? Mm. Mm. Some information on him. Nothing relevant? No. Okay. Um, usually usurpers are usually people who... Fail. Were fail. Their names are stricken from yeah. records. Yeah. So they'd, they'd only be a general reference because yeah. they didn't want you to. Uh, they didn't want the record of the weakness shown. Yeah. It's like one of the greatest battles between Ethiopia and Egypt was like, boom. <laughs> Egypt won. What happened? No one knows. No one knows. Okay. So back in the office. Please make a spot hidden roll. In so the third the column. Hey, it's the fourth column. In the fifth column? Just yeah. under sleight of hand. Yeah. In the fifth column, under sleight of hand? The fourth column. Fourth column, fifth row, sleight of hand. Yeah. Just underneath it. All right, baby. Spot hidden. What is your spot hidden? 25. That's it. I rolled a 99. You don't find anything. <laughs> no shit. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, you beat a hasty retreat as you hear someone trying to... Uh, some rattling at the door to the second office. Mm. Alright, so I'm going to go close that door. I'm uh, sorry. I'm going to close that door. It's locked. Like, it's the one you push over the chair under. No, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna close the. I'm gonna go yeah, into the office. Door, yeah. Go into the head librarian's room. Close this door. Lock it. If there's a lock, go to him. Uh, go through his clothes, his drawers, anything. You didn't find anything. Pardon? That's what that spot hidden was. 
But I wasn't in his office. The, was that was for the whole thing. Oh, that was for right? the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just to simplify the whole thing, you okay. don't, don't cool. find anything. Well, that definitely sucks. So, well, he's out cold for a few hours, and he probably won't remember shit because he's an old dude. And I'm sure all 19-year-old girls seduce him every day, right? No, I don't have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> It'll be fine. Just... It's it's 1925, not 2025. Sure. I mean, it could be. Just don't go into the office for a little bit, that's all. Oh, yeah, shit. That's right. There's no, like, uh... There's no, like, CCTV in libraries. No. <laughs> Alright, fuck this. I'm just gonna grab all the... Is there any, like, gold statues or anything here? Any nice art shit? No, not really. Anything valuable. Really. Anything valuable. No particularly. Alright, cool. So I'm just gonna go up to him and make sure that that ball gag goes a little bit further down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Head librarian found murdered. <laughs> right? He was found with his dick out and a ball keg in his mouth. Everyone is unsure what happened. It's Saturday night? Yes! I know it's Friday night. It? <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday afternoon. <laughs> so, no witnesses found. No witnesses found. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, uh, what do you want to do? Well, are we gonna? I'm assuming you're coming back to where we are. Yeah, I'm gonna come back. Make sure he's mm -hmm. like, he, make sure he is not like getting up for any time soon without uh, medical attention, probably, which he's going to get. Sure. Is there a closet? There's no other. Th I'm gonna put him in his bathroom before I leave. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you know. Give him a swirly. <laughs> no, that would wake him up. Uh, <laughs> just make sure you know the door is closed. Yep. Uh, these are like. These are probably keyhole locks, so you can yeah. actually lock it from the outside using hairpins. Are you going to untie him, or are you going to untie him? I'm not fucking um, untying what's him. What's your locksmith skill like? Uh, Third row. No, I know where it is. Yeah. Okay. It is a 21. Oh, okay. But I can, uh, I can make it. I yeah. A 9. Okay, yeah, you lock it up. And leave, and then head back to the library. It'll take you over. Get back there and be like, "Okay, yeah, we need to leave." No, I'm not gonna say we need to leave. Okay. I say I'm gonna leave. Yeah. They can stay there. I'm gonna go off to. I don't know. I guess we live in the city, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna go to my home. Okay. The next day, they're still there researching. Yeah. I just give you the heads up that where the restriction section is. I give you that there are two guards and a padlock door. Yeah, well. They are unfortunately. That's your armed. problem, not mine. <laughs> okay. And then, um, yeah, you, you've translated the hieroglyphs and then yeah, you have your information. So we just need to get into the restricted room. We could. What, what was in. The, what's in there again? The. Dev. Very mysterious. The, the book. The book with the weird name. Because I'm never going to remember the exact name for it. Oh, Although, the I mysterious? Think, can I look at the letter again? Sure. Um, like, what does the letter tell us? Well, the method of delivering the thing out of this world is still not a cursed house. Yeah. So, we'll probably just go to the house after we finish our research. Sure. Or, have two of us go to the house if we really want, but I don't know if it's good. I think we should all, like, I think, I think Nevada has the best chance of getting into the restricted area. Okay. I think Lois, the, actually, wait, what is he a professor of? He's, Languages. All right, so we'll send Nevada and the professor in there, send Lois to the house, and maybe have her accompany it, so, like, you know, I don't die. Yeah, I mean, the old man's unarmed. At least this one has a hockey stick. <laughs> Where has she been hiding this thing the whole time? I'm oh, shit. Now. I totally forgot to bring the paperweight with me. Nevada! <laughs> <laughs> and tell Nevada to get the paperweight. <laughs> I think the office is closed for now. Well, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, Nevada kind of went in the next day to finish up his research, and there was, like... A couple of police around the place, and um, they were clearing out the restricted section. 
Alright. Well, that's good. I'm moving up to some... Apparently to some location, but they wouldn't disclose where. Can we follow them? They were putting them into police cars. Can we follow them? Sure. Nonchalantly follow them if we can Yeah, it. I mean, it's... Where? Like, How? I don't know. Let's go jack a car outside. Sure. Do none of us drive? Huh? Do none of us drive? Probably. You might have a car. I mean, how did we get here? I'm pretty sure one of us drove. Maybe. Do you have a car? <laughs> it's up to you if you have a car or not. I have the driving skill, so... Yeah. Yes. I have a car. But unfortunately, Nevada is doing research for the day. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right. Girl, you go to the... You go follow. Okay. I don't think this is a good idea, but all right. Well, you have driving, right? Yeah, I have driving. What's your driving skill? A nice, solid 20. Sure. You don't need to roll it. You're driving a car. No, 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 I know. Driving them at a high-speed chase around a mountainside no, no. But remember, in a this, storm. This is a character who's very much just like scientific facts, wants to do yeah. everything. Why am I chasing the cops? Who knows? Because they have the stuff... From restricted section. For all we know, it's not even real. It's just the ramblings of a crazy man. Like, we don't know this. Wow, what kind of scientist are you? I'm be I am I do not believe in ghosts. What I I'd like to find the truth, but frankly speaking, chasing a cop car is not The truth comes good. from research. Fine. Let's go. I get in the car. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> several different top cars go in several different directions. Oh, God. Whoop, whoop. So, we're just going to play some KRS-One in the library and then just like, let's get down to it. So, Nevada wants to research whatever's left Yeah, he over. finishes research in the hieroglyphs and gets a translation. All right. I just come back to the library and go, uh, there's no way I'm getting this right. Four different cop cars just go in all different directions. I'm just going to come back and let you know they all split up and went. I had no idea. Wow. Failure. I am very disappointed. That's nice. But that's fine. Come on, get in. <laughs> all right. So we should probably just go to the house, honestly. At this point, because they did mention there are translations from the book in the house. Assuming that nobody's been in the house and... We should still be able to get into the house and just get the translations and see what they were saying. So, suggestion from the chat is that we actually pick the car that had their book in it. Hmm? What? I don't know. How do you pick which car has the book in it? I don't know. You just pick one. You pick one to follow and you follow it. Okay, then you want me to just pick a car and follow it? Yeah. Okay, then fine. Because right. other than that, you haven't tried, right? Yeah, fair enough. So, okay, I was just going to pick you up and say, let's go. But I'm assuming you just drove on your own then. So I'm just going to pick... How many cars was it? There were four of them. I'm going to pick the one that's turning left. Okay. I'm going to pick the middle with the second one. Okay. Sure. And I'm going to follow this car. Yeah, and I'll follow as well. At a reasonable pace, that doesn't look suspicious. You don't it's need to roll. Okay. You, it's driving. It's basic driving. Okay. You're not like, as I said, you're not driving around at a high, high speed chase. You're a high speed chase. Driving like normal human beings. All right. I wouldn't know. I, I don't drive. I have no idea. Uh, so one sec. After the, uh, the, so the car you follow, um, where's it going? It's just driving around. It's just driving around. Yeah. Do I see any of the other cars on its drive? Hmm? I'm assuming that, because they're all going around the city, right? Yeah. We've been in the city, we know the city kind of well, we can see where it's going, like, general idea where it would be heading in this area. But do I see any of the other cop cars that would have been driving? You'd see other cop cars, whether they're the same cop car or different cop cars, you don't know. But are they are they parked? They're just driving around. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So, being producer time, it is that time. 
Okay, so uh, we're going to take a few minute break to rehydrate and relax. Uh, we'll be back because I think Ryan and I need to come up with a game plan. And so we will be back in 10. And if you want to check out our website, it's harrykey.com. Uh, you can find the store in the upper right hand corner. And there's a bunch of role playing if you're into that, which I assume that you are. Thank you, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll be back in 10 minutes. <laughs>